When in Europe it's always very difficult to understand when things become binding. The regulation has been just voted in Parliament but will become applicable only in two years' time, which means that a number of provisions like the composition and the functioning of the audit committee, the new kind of audit services, and not audit services that will be provided to audited firms will be specified only then. And lastly, the new kind of audit reports will be specified and applicable only by mid-2016. That's what we uh, prospect. But all this is complicated and will need preparation, and we will be delighted to explain that and discuss this with our clients. Well, the first thing to say is that this reform is a significant harmonization step for the Union and will create a genuine single market for audit. But for certain provisions, member states will have the choice and certain options. One example of options left to member states is external rotation. External rotation is an obligation for the companies to change their auditor after a given period of time. The regulation says they must change after 10 years. But member states can choose to have a shorter period. Others can choose to extend their period for another 10 years or even 14 years if the audit is done by two auditors in the form of a joint audit. Well, no, I think the European Union understood that for existing audit engagement to change everything in 2016 was too automatic. There was a need for a transitional period and that's now in the regulation. The nature of that transitional period will depend on two things. First, the previous duration of engagements and whether these audit engagements are annual or pluriannual. But what we can say is that overall, the effects of this need to change the auditor will be perceivable only in 2020.